Hi there, I'm Dr. Hans Toki, as you know, uh, and welcome to the Social Research in the Behavioral Sciences course. And uh, in this class, you will be working on a research project that you construct yourself in the social sciences. So at its base, what you're trying to do is find out something in your neighborhood about why people do what they do or why groups of people do what they do. In the course, uh, you will see uh, various structures and pieces that make this happen. So each part of the course builds on uh, itself, really. So it's like a bunch of Lego blocks, really pieces of a puzzle, and it comes together in the end is the grand picture. What you need to do at the beginning here is to understand how the course will operate. This is a fully online asynchronous course. What this means is you're working independently like an independent researcher, uh, and then you're uploading all your results onto the discussion board. So there are a number of discussion board responses that are required throughout the course, and each one of them pretty much uh, are going to be cut and pasted, or are going to be added to your final paper. In being asynchronous, there are no required live collaborative ultra or Zoom or WebEx or whatever kind of format you want to talk about in this course. So you don't need to ask me about that per se. Uh, I will from time to time have informal Q&A type collabs uh, and I'll let you know when we're going to do those. So there is no live interaction per se. Now that being said, that doesn't mean I'm not going to be connecting with you. You will connect through the discussion board and what that allows me to do is to react to some of the work you're doing. And also you'll be submitting your assignments individually ones there and from time to time you might see me make comments on uh, some of your individual postings where you could probably work on something uh, to make your project even better. Further, in a few instances such as gang initiation, uh, you will be responding to other people to what they're posting. So it's not like you're alien to anybody else. But still, Generally speaking, you're like an independent researcher on a social topic about why people do something or why groups of people do something in your neighborhood. All right. In the end, you will produce a research paper. And uh, my goal in this course, being that I'm assuming most of you are third and fourth year students, fairly advanced, you're adept at, at uh, various different elements, of academia, that this can for some of you become a real strong resume piece that you can use either to apply to graduate school or that you can uh, use in job applications uh, once you leave college. And this has been the case for some students in this course that they've actually added this to their resume or their curriculum vitae and uh, it's become an, a good piece for them to advance their own careers. So don't take it as a blow off course. I encourage you to take it on as a project that you can be proud of, almost like a thesis as it were, that you can use later on. As part of this process, this is an interdisciplinary course, which means we're coming from different disciplines to do social research. The way I have approached that in this course is I know all of you are coming from various majors, communication design, uh, nursing, civil engineering, human services, promotions and uh, advertising, whatever the field might be that you're taking a major in. Or you already have a professional field you're involved in. I've had things such as court officers, uh, people who are working in retail uh, and are managers already. I've had uh, people who are working in healthcare already, very common. What I'm asking you to do is to integrate your social research into your professional field, either your college major or what you perhaps aspire to be. 
this makes it interdisciplinary. And also at the end of the day, it makes it useful for you uh, as a researcher for a piece that fits in with your broader scope of what uh, your education is all about. All right, so, so far, we've uh, given you a little bit about the asynchronous model, about research itself, and then how you're gonna integrate your professional field. The next element of uh, my little opening here is when can you contact me? I will have office hours via live email. What that means is I will be active and I've booked off time to do anything else. I have over 180 students uh, this semester, um, all of them online. So what I've decided for you guys is on Mondays and Wednesday mornings from 8 to 9.30, so there's this block of time from 8 to 9.30 on Mondays and Wednesdays are my live online by email office hours. So what you do is you think through your questions that you might have, pop me an email after 8 a.m. and I will get back to you probably as almost instantaneously or within a minute or so, because I'll be monitoring the emails coming in. Oh, if you can't get to me during that time, email me at other times and I will be back to you within 24 or 48 hours or sometimes even sooner, depending on what I am doing. I'm monitoring the course very regularly. But my guarantee to you is, Monday and Wednesday mornings are office hours, and the rest of the time you can connect to me uh, within 24, 48 hours. I also briefly mentioned in the opener, from time to time I may also call a collab, uh, collaborative altar that is, uh, kind of a question and answer session where I can give you some uh, answers live. We did one or two of them already. All right, so that's how you contact me, and I hope that's helpful to you. How do you submit your work? Well, I have be designating a schedule of small assignments. There's several of them in this course that are worth two points each, and I'm expecting them to be submitted every week. That's how I figure out if you're active in the course and really is the attendance for the course. Uh, and this is required by the school and by the state that we monitor that students that have gone fully online, that they're actually consistently active as if they were in a regular classroom. So I'm expecting these small assignments, uh, which take at least three hours for each one of them, uh, that you will do your readings, you will do your videos, you'll do your research, and then you will uh, submit them by creating your own thread in a specific forum for that week. Over the period of the semester, you'll see that these two pointers all accumulate to a fairly large amount of your grade. So don't miss them. Don't uh, forget about them. So that's the first part. You submit those on discussion board. You'll notice as, I've, uh, as I'm doctoring up now the schedule for the fall, you'll see how much each assignment is worth and also when I expect it due. All right, the second element is four major assignments that are worth 10 points each. These ones, I have a hard due date and it really is important that you complete these pieces because they ultimately will almost be cut and pasted and lifted into your final paper. The first one is your research question, which is due in the middle of September. I'll have a separate tutorial on this, on what is your research question to be. Don't rush it. Work it through properly, because what you land with is what you're going to work with for the rest of the project. The second one is a quantitative assignment, where you are to count something. There's two elements to count. One of them is a survey of at least 10 people with a five question Likert scale. And the second one, one is a frequency count where you're watching and counting some sort of phenomena that's going on. Traffic in the street, people walking in and out of doors, the numbers of people uh, in a cafe or the number of people you see if you're inside in COVID, the number of people you see outside wearing masks. So there's a frequency count and there is 
a survey of 10 people. Now these 10 people, you might actually survey them online or you might survey them on the street, uh, but everybody has at least 10 people they can ask, but ideally people in your neighborhood. So that's the quantitative assignment. You will see a separate tutorial already posted for the quantitative assignment. Then there is the qualitative assignment, which is done with what's called ethnography, where you'll see a tutorial on this. This is graphing out the culture and ethnicity of a people, or really what I'm asking you to do is graph out and take notes on and observe people doing some social phenomenon in your neighborhood. You'll need at least four 40 minute episodes, what we call episodic observation, where you're on the scene for 40 minutes, at least four times, and that produces a qualitative assignment where you write down in a very scientific way, which you will learn in this course, uh, really beginning learning in ethnography, in how to graph out and write a novella, a uh, really the story of what you just saw in those episodes. That will happen in November. Finally, the fourth of these assignments is a presentation by PowerPoint. What this means is there's a seven slide PowerPoint you will produce, which is the outline to your final paper before you produce your final paper. This is done in the beginning of December. So what you'll have had to do is to gone through the three other majors, your research question, your quantitative, your qualitative, to get you to this point of being able to pull together all of this data into an actual presentation. Now, I'm not gonna be having you presenting these live. I'm gonna have them simply there as a PowerPoint. You need to show me this outline uh, in simple uh, font. You'll have also another tutorial on what this looks like. Finally, all of this gets put together into the big piece, which is your final research paper worth 30% in this course. Don't miss it. Uh, there is no lates on the four majors or the final paper. So in your opening uh, research question assignment, you're going to have to work through how am I going to organize my schedule this fall in order to pull this off. I had one student uh, in a class kind of had already submitted and said, well, I'll do my counting in one week and I'll do my watching in another week and I'll be done in three weeks. It's impossible, let me tell you. It's impossible to do this course in three weeks. Indeed, uh, you'll use all your time. It's a tough course. Uh, hopefully you'll be gratified with it. And I'm not trying to scare you off, but you will take all the time. Uh, for the several hundred students I've put through this, this process, they'll all say, we worked right up until the end to make it happen. So you have to structure yourself out. I illustrate this principle to students this way. Nurses help us. Uh, one nurse said, well, this course is like a slow bleed. And I said, well, what do you mean? Well, in the emergency ward, they just get, get big cuts and they just fix it and they have you out. She said, in this course, it just kind of bleeds on you and just goes and goes. So think of this course as a slow bleed, not a emergency that you can just fix and stitch up. Work on it methodically. Build those little pieces of the course and you will do just fine. Hopefully this little uh, opener does help you. Your first assignment is to go and introduce yourself to the class, and then you're gonna go out and walk in your neighborhood for half an hour and tell us a little bit about your neighborhood. Because this ultimately, at the end of the day, may end up in your final paper as research field because you're going to be in your neighborhood. From there, you're going to be working on your research question. So dial up the research tutori the tutorial for the research question, uh, read the information about it, and start working on how you're going to come out with a research question. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next time. Bye.